What's up, guys? It's you, and welcome back to week th uh, three, round six of the LBA um, versus my boy Johnny Diesel, aka JJ. Really cool guy. Uh, the, the link to his Twitter will be in the description below. He is the owner of the Los Angeles Nitto Kings and is honestly one of the bigger threats in the league. So, we're going to go straight into team preview. I don't have any other garbage to talk about today. So, um, he brought, he drafted Rain this year. Um, his first three picks were. Politoed, Latios, Talonflame, I think. Not in that order. I think actually the inverse of that order. Either way, super threatening. Uh, he ended up getting, uh, or bringing to this match, rather, Klefki, uh, Kingra, Swampert. He brought Toxicroak, he brought Tangrowth, and he brought Politoed. Um, so very, very good rain team. And then I ended up bringing Scarf Excadrill to Staple. Uh, mixed Defense is Clefable. Uh, support Thunderous with just like the right moves to break down his team. Um, endure Leechy Berry him only because it outpaces his rain sweepers. And if I get rid of Klefki and Toxicroak, it's game. Um, I brought Physically Defensive, Rest Talk, Waterfall, Dragon Dance, Gyarados. And the reason I brought that is because I needed a way to check Mega Swampert and I needed a way to switch in a Talonflame because I would get the Intimidate, then I could Mega and just rest off the damage. And then I brought Gothitelle, which is actually going to be super handy for me this week because it can help me trap stuff like Politoed and it can help me trap stuff like Tangrowth and maybe even Klefki. Um, but anyway, we were 1-4 and four going into this battle and I knew that it was time to get it together and I needed to start... Like, like I, I needed to go on a run in order to put myself back in playoff position because um, I knew that this was kind of a downtime in Aqua Division. People were kind of slipping up in rankings and whatever. So if I was able to get a win here, I could potentially push myself back into playoff contention. So yeah, that, that was my goal for this week. I was super nervous going into the match because he is one of the bigger threats in the league. But anyway, he is going to go ahead and issue the challenge. He's going to lead with Slippy the Toad. As I end up leading with Drill, I was really hoping he would leave with lead with Klefki so I could just fire off a free EQ um, but that was not the case I was kind of worried that because uh, in my mind I was like okay I have got to tell there's no way he's gonna lead Politoed because if I trap Politoed turn one the game is good as gone um, but he ends up leading Politoed which is fine I'm just gonna go out of my Gyarados because I don't really fear Scald Burns um, because I am really bulky I resist um, I, I resist Scald and I can't just rest off the damage and any uh, potential uh, any potential status, but he's just gonna go ahead and go for Scald again as I switch out of my Clefable. Um, I was really hoping he would switch out to Tangrowth right there because I felt that that was a pretty good opportunity for him. But uh, seeing as I don't have Soft Boiled on my Clefable this week, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get on my rocks. I felt that Soft Boiled wasn't necessary for this week as it was gonna get worn. It was it was gonna get too KO'd by Spec Scald or like Specs Hydro Pump or Specs Surf or uh, Waterfall from uh, Swampert, anyways. So. I'm just going to go straight back out into my Gyarados um, to eat this up right here. And I was just waiting on him to switch because, to be honest, I didn't see any reason really for him to stay in right here. Um, but because he does have a tank growth just chilling there. I guess he was scouting my set. He didn't want me to have like Ice Fang or something. But I'm just going to go for the Waterfall. It does negligible damage as he ends up going for the Scald. And right here, I was like, okay, he's stayed in for like five turns or whatever. He's not going to stay in or he's not going to switch out now. So I end up going out in, into Snooky the Gothitelle as uh, he ends up withdrawing his Politoed and going straight in straight out into Tangrowth, which is actually really nice for me, because trapping this really helps stuff like Thunderous succeed later in the game, and uh, I believe I can just 2 it KO this thing with Spec Psyshock. It may be a 3 it KO. Um, yeah, it's a 3 it KO, three it KO because he ends up going for the Giga Drain. Gets a crit there, which is a little bit unfortunate, but hey, I'm just glad he doesn't have knockoff this week, because um, that would have been pretty bad for me, but no matter... Uh, even if he gets a crit again, he's not going to be able to recover off enough enough health in order for me to uh, not knock him out with the next side shock. So I'm just going to go for that again, as I believe, yeah, that ends up knocking out Tangrowth. So Gothitelle's already done part of its job. The only other thing it really needs to trap is, uh, it really only needs to trap his Politoed. And if I trap Politoed, I think I'm in a very good position. I'm going to go out in Clefable right here, as uh, he ends up going for a knockoff, which is fine. I eat this up. And now Clefable's about to make the best move it's had all season. Clefable has actually been dead weight for me. But he ends up just going for a gunk shot. Clefable dodges it, ends up getting some pivotal damage off with this Moonblast, which is nice. Um, and I also get a crit. <laughs> so that, that was probably Clefable's best sequence all year. It was really unfortunate I had to get a crit. Um and that he had to miss, but, you know, seeing some of the luck we've had in the previous weeks, um, I can't really say sorry for that, but he ends up going out to Politoed as uh, I end up making the 
I think pretty good play. I end up going out into uh, Gothitelle right here. Um, so now he is trapped. There's nothing he can do about it. There, this is a Specs Thunderbolt coming his way. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire off that. I really considered putting Energy Ball over this. And in hindsight, that was probably the better uh, idea. I just wanted something in order to hit Talonflame. Uh, but he ends up going out in a team player right here, which is fine. Um, I, I knew as long as he didn't click uh, Power Up Punch right here uh, that this wasn't a complete C team <laughs> and uh, that just sacking Gothitelle was the right play because so I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt again as he knocks me out with the Waterfall which is fine and that is actually two turns of Rain Gone so there's only six turns left um, he may have it on Klefki um, but I know as long as I apply enough offensive pressure I should be fine um, but right here he's going to go for the Protect which was actually really lame uh, because I went for the Endure and that would have helped me a lot right there um, but right here, I saw no reason to not make this double right here. I think I make the double. Did I make the good play? Yeah, I end up making the double out in Excadrill because I knew he had to go out in a Klefki because attacking um, Hitmonlee meant something of his died the next turn. And uh, I was... And I knew he couldn't afford to let that happen with only a few amount of rain turns left. So I'm just going to go for the EQ, and I know that will 2-it KO him uh, no matter what. And he's just going to go back out into his Mega Swamper right here with the Reflect up and be able to take this Earthquake really well. But at this point, Staple has done its job. It's prevented Klefki from getting rain up again because uh, it will get 2-it KO'd um, by Thunderous' T-Bolt on the Switch, which is fine. So I'm just going to go out into my Gyarados here in order to stall out turns of rain. I'm going to eat this Waterfall up. Uh... Well, not really eat it up, but it did like 30%, which is what I needed it to do. So even though Gyarados didn't get a kill this week, um, it was it did a really good job of just checking Mega Swampert. So the rain is gone now. I can just go into a Nimbus. He ends up going for the Protect as I reveal Grass Knot. And at this point, he kind of realized that there's nothing more he can do. Um, because he's going to try to switch into Kingdra here because Kingdra is pretty light and he does need Klefki if he has rain. Um, so I'm just going to go for the grass now, but without a light screen up, this plus T-Bolt will be able to knock Kingdra out, and that is going to go ahead and wrap up this, uh, this week's battle, um, because even if he tries, even if he comes in and sets a light screen up, which I think is his best play right here, like he could go and try to set up rain again, um, but at this point I still have three mons left. I, I do have the capability to just beat him one-on-one -on -one with my hit only. So he needed to try to get screens up in order to beat me that way. But even with the screen, or even with light screen up, he's still going to go ahead and go down to a grass knot. So Thunderous, who had not really done a whole lot of work for me, um, had mainly done a lot of utility work, finally gets his chance to shine, going 3-0 this week. So um, overall, I'm really glad that I was able to kind of rally get the team back on my feet with that 3-0 victory um I think I really needed that to be honest <laughs> um and you know I think that's kind of the cool thing about my team is that there's not one Pokemon that just carries the load every week um there's stuff like DD Gyarados which can be very very potent against some opponents or just play kind of a, a utility role like it did this week sometimes Gothitelle won't even be brought just because it doesn't make sense and other times it'll go 2-1 this week and take out arguably two of the most important Pokemon on his team utility wise that stop other Pokemon from sweeping like even him only with uh uh, despite the fact that I couldn't pull off the sweep that I wanted to with it, um, did a very, very good job of pressuring his Klefki and pressuring his rain sweepers as well. Fable with the nice dodge, but, you know, sorry about that one, but, you know, I've kind of had it all season, so. <laughs> anyway, um, that's going to wrap up this week's LBA battle, so if you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like. It's really to sub show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video. Which is, uh, who do you think was the MVP in uh, round, what is this, round, no, week three. I'm going to start doing that because uh, I think that's pretty cool. We can have our own, like, uh, Tampa Bay Thunderous MVP. Um, yesterday's battle will be maybe maybe on the screen right now, maybe in the description below. Um, so if you guys missed that one, go check it out. Then you can vote on the MVP and whatnot. But anyway, uh, with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that... I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Wow, that was actually kind of a weak catch you on the flip-flop because my voice cracked. But anyway, I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop.